Good morning, folks. We're going to cover quite a bit today. Solar activity, sunspots, an earthquake, more on the weather hitting the West, several NOVA-related articles, and we'll squeeze NASA on a scientific article. But we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star, where all the activity remained modest. C-class solar flares, small pops, nothing major. We are eyeing the southern sunspot groups in coming today, and the nearby plasma filament for its eruptive activity. This morning, a small flare there may have begun destabilizing that plasma filament to the south of it. As you can see on the sunspot view, the northern groups are beginning to depart, the southern group is approaching central longitudes, and there is a new sunspot visible at the limb to the left. We'll continue monitoring them all today. Big earthquake struck the Philippines 6.7 downgraded from 7.0, but luckily it was a blot echo at the low velocity zone which lessened the surface shaking felt in the region. Up next, following up our polar vortex discussion yesterday about the cold coming to the United States, we also mentioned the severe weather potential to the south. That is developing quite quickly, and the lightning overlay here shows the energetic weather and where it's most expected. The same low bringing cold air from the north on the west side is driving a convergence line on the south and southeast, smashing together air masses of different temperature, moisture, and electric potential. Severe thunderstorms and tornadoes are possible with this today triple dose of Nova science, starting with CRISM. The newest X-ray satellite is showing the universe in high energy rays better than any that came before. This is one of its first shots of a Nova explosion and everyone in the community is stoked for the new science it's going to deliver in the coming years. Up next, we're going to the radio circles. As was suggested here, over a year ago, they are now of the mindset that these features are indeed the radio remnants of NOVA events. What can I say? We troll astronomy a lot, and rightfully so, but I believe they got this one right. Basically, the exact explanation we gave when these were first discovered. Lastly, on the NOVA front, we've got the hidden remnant of Cassiopeia. Our eyes can't see it, but James Webb and Chandra sure can. By both using infrared and X-ray wavelengths, they can even tell what elements were made by the NOVA and what features came from what aspects of the explosion. Link to all of those is below and to this one. Lastly, folks, going to wag my finger at NASA here, trying to explain the intense geomagnetic storm that occurred last April. I've got a lot of friends at NASA, but none of them are on this work, and given what they said, I'm not surprised. They attempt to do some mental gymnastics to explain why a major solar storm at Earth, with low-latitude aurora, was driven by what they call a major flare, an M1 event. While the CME was solid, it wasn't major, and neither is an M1. An X1 isn't even a major flare. Folks, this isn't the first time we've seen them trying to explain why modest space weather created such a massive geomagnetic response, but they never seem to land on the notion that the Earth is more vulnerable with the magnetic field weakening as much as it is. I'm not sure if these guys are running defense for the disaster unfolding or they're stuck in their little box, but either way. The reason Earth is taking severe effects from modest space weather is the loss of our protection in the ongoing magnetic pole shift. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.